What's up guys? Uh, this is Nick from Arch City Poker and in this video this is going to be uh, part two of the live No Limit 6 Max uh, two-part session where I'm recording live and using the webcam as well so you guys can see me while I'm playing. Uh, if you haven't watched part one I would um, in this series I would definitely go back and, and consider watching that. I think that um, there's some interesting spots for sure. Uh, there's some reads I have, like, well, I don't know. There are some reads. I, I have been 3-bet a couple times by iDog and Surfmate, who um, I don't have a ton of reads on yet, but it, there was some hands worth uh, talking about, definitely some concepts worth talking about. So I would definitely go back and watch part one if you guys haven't. Otherwise, let's just continue with part two here. Scott Bernie has been opening uh, to just 2x from anywhere at the table, so I don't take that as weak. I just think that's probably what he does with most of his range. King-10 off just plays better heads up. I think it's a nice hand to 3-bet uh, from the small blind and try to either take down the pot right there, or if I get called, I have a hand that does pretty well post-flop uh, with that dynamic. Definitely going to have more of a linear range in that spot. I'm not going to have hands like like King-6 suited more often than not, where I would have that kind of hand in position on him when 3-betting. So um, I definitely think that that was a fine line. So... I don't know anything about this player. Uh, he 3-bets me from the small blind. I don't think this hand has great uh, like visibility post-flop. You could definitely argue it. I think queen-jack suited, I'm definitely going to call, but I think this one I don't like as much. Um, I'd like to have a hand like, I don't know, maybe like 9-8 suited or like 6-5 suited would be better. A pair would be fine, but I don't think queen-jack off plays. Um, it doesn't play too well versus a standard small blind three betting range. So I think that's actually a fold. Um, you could argue it. And obviously if I get a read on him that he's three betting quite wide from that spot, um, then queen jack offsuit becomes a hand you could four bet bluff with, with like its blockers. It doesn't work as well as uh, like an ace x hand or a king x hand because you don't really block aces or kings, but it works okay. It blocks queens, it blocks jacks, ace queen ace-jack, so um, it's sort of the same concept, but it's also a hand you could consider flatting with if he is that wide and just playing position, so uh, definitely some stuff to think about. And four-handed iDog uh, just min-raises here. I usually would three-bet this most of the time. I am actually going to flat this time. I, like I've said before in a couple of my videos, I would like to balance my flatting range in the spot and have some broadways um, just so I'm not exploitable on boards that run out with Broadway cards, whereas like if I flat, then I can never have those cards, so that's why you definitely want to have some of these in your range. And I'm just going to check here. I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to turn my hand into a bluff. Um, I think he could be checking back some ace -X hands here, like checking back hands with showdown value. Um, this is a little bit more polarizing of a spot, because I don't think he would bet a hand like pairs in between the four and the ace so i think it's often ace x or nothing like ace x plus or nothing and i'll just give him the benefit of the doubt um these guys have seemed a little bit snug in, in video one this is why i said it was important to probably watch just for the sake of knowing how these players play he played a hand he played aces in a three bet pot kind of passively like his flop and turn play were pretty standard but i think he missed a ton of value on the river um, i'm not going to talk about that hand you guys can go back in part one if you haven't watched it and and go look, but I think he missed a ton. He's missing a ton of river, or a ton of river value uh, with the way he played the hand. So I think he is a little bit more snug, and that's something to keep in mind. Right table seven six offsuit. I'm gonna defend against the small blind. Um, so an open and then a three bet. You can consider four betting this sometimes, but I think I don't quite know enough about this player's range in the spot yet. So I'll let it go. And um, so if I was suited here and didn't three bet and I had one of these backdoor um, flush draws, I think that I would consider raising or floating here. But without those, I think this is just a little bit too wide. Uh, you just have to remember in a blind, like a small blind versus big blind battle, though, you're going to have to defend a little bit wider and be a little bit tougher because his range will be wider um, as well. So he's going to be... Uh, I think a lot of players in that spot in the small blind are, are C betting too often, like they're over C betting, and they are susceptible and exploitable to uh, flop bluff raises. So I definitely, if I would have had a backdoor flush draw there, I think I would have put that into my bluff raising range with the ability to uh, barrel a bunch of turn cards pretty profitably, where I think he'll be over folding. So definitely a spot to 
uh, look for in the future and think about. Right table, um, I am actually, I think this plays okay multiway. I do want to have some of what of a flatting range here. I, I think, here, I'm going to start actually, left table, I'm going to start with a bet. I'll get back to that. Um, actually, I think this actually plays better um, as a three bet here. I don't like my timing so much, but um, three is not a good card for my range over here on the left. Um, I think this is a spot where I don't really have a ton of fold equity. Although, I don't know, he could be definitely overfolding. Like, yeah, I'm actually going to bet here. Um, like I said, I'll get back to this hand in a sec here. Um, well, actually, now that he folded. Actually, I'll just get back to that in a sec here. Um, to be honest, guys, with these live recordings, sometimes I lose track of things sometimes. That's why I don't think I play as well in them. I'm going to get back to what was happening over here and see if I can bring it up. Um, left table, I started with a C bet on... Actually, I'll just bring up... I'm going to bring up both hands if I can. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with this hand here. So nines... Yeah, nines will be a three bet here um, pretty much every time for me. Blind, small blind versus big blind. Uh, if you four bets, I'm probably just going to call. We are pretty deep. I don't see, I think shoving would be, or I think five betting would be kind of, uh, be kind of light at these stakes with this hand. I don't think that accomplishes a whole lot. I think it's standard to check back here. And I have a hand that is enough of a hand to, I believe, call the turn and see what he does. Kind of, ch or, uh, kind of call and then decide river possibly. Um, I do block one heart and one spade. I do block the straight. Interesting. Um, I just think nines are a little too strong to fold at this point when I check back. I check back for this reason so I could call and then decide on the river. Um, right table. I think right table will start with. Check. Uh, left table, I mean, if he has a flush, he has a flush, but this is just too much hand to, uh, too much hand to fold here. So, yep, that's fine. Um, and I'm going to fold on the right table. I mean, if... Oh, we got a lot going on here, guys. I'm going to try to get back to all these hands uh, in a sec here. So, facing a 3-bet uh, from the big blind when I open the small blind, this will actually be a pretty easy defend, as our ranges will be pretty wide. And I don't flop... Uh, the greatest for my range, for my actual hand, it's obviously okay. If he does bet in this spot, it is actually pretty polarized. Um, I don't think he'd be betting like hands worse than 8x or ace x that have showdown value. So um, I could definitely have hands like two pair, uh, middle and bottom set for sure. I think it's a good hand to throw into uh, my check raising range for sure. Sizing. I'd like to have it to where I can set up like a turn shove. Um, I don't think we're deep enough to where I can get that by the river. But I definitely have enough equity to uh, probably just get it in here. And it's just gonna be really hard for him to continue without like ace x plus here. He's just very polarized to that in this spot, I think. Um, if he's betting like a hand, like tens or jacks then he's definitely gonna be exploitable to this kind of play so um, I like my line and thought process there and I just keep getting hands where I can't get back to talk about these I mean I can if I maybe if I sit out um, one of these tables I can do that so here's a min raise from a short stack uh, I'm gonna go ahead and yeah we'll just do three is fine we'll three bet him with ace king I think that's pretty standard I think I would like to flat ace king Ace Queen sometimes for some balance, but I'm going to be three betting this hand more often than not. 
And again, so this is a spot where I would have been checking a lot um, in my previous years of playing, but I've been betting like third pot in the spot with a, most of my range, like mostly, I mean, it's gonna be a lot of bluffs, so I do need to balance that with some value hands in the spot. And I think that's a good spot to bet really small there and then bet a little bit more standard on the turn. It keeps me aggressive, keeps me, keeps, uh, my image aggressive and a little bit looser. I keep the initiative in the pot, so I think those are all good things. So I'm actually going to, so I'm gonna sit out on the right table and try to bring up um, some of these hands here. So let's go back. And I apologize, guys, I got a little sidetracked. I'm gonna try to get back to some of these. Yeah. Okay, so I open in the cutoff with Queen Jack of Hearts, very standard. Uh, that'll be a fold. And Scalabrini flats from the big blind. Definitely a flop that could hit the big blinds range hard. Um, my cutoff range won't hit this as hard. I do like um, I do like throwing this hand into my betting range though, just because it doesn't really have showdown value. And when I bet this board, I, I am going to have to have some bluffs, and Hearts will obviously be. Um, a good portion of my uh, bluffing range. Deuces, actually, with a couple guys that have been... Uh, they haven't really been three-betting too much, but deuces... I used to open these like 100% of the time in these games, but I've actually been folding these um, a good portion of the time under the gun, so I think that's fine. And on this turn, it's not a good turn card for my range, really, at all, uh, for the most part. And it's a card that definitely favors this player. However, when he calls at the big blind and calls the flop, I could see him definitely calling with hands like, I don't know, um, like king five suited, king six suited, um, maybe like ten seven suited. So like he's going to have a lot of one pair hands that are kind of weak and will probably be overfolding this turn with no shit on value and still some equity, I like a bet here. And you could definitely argue sizing it up. Um, I just think this size, it works fine as long as I'm prepared to fire a lot of brick rivers. Um, so I think that is an interesting hand to talk about. I think with like ace king of hearts, I might check back sometimes um, on the flop with some showdown value, but with queen high, I just don't have as much showdown value. So I think that's why I did that. And I already talked about that hand. Oh, yeah, so let's go to this one. That sucked. So I think this is pretty standard. I mean, I uh, three bet him with nines, blinds versus, or small blind versus big blind, and this will be a fold. And on this flop, I don't see a ton of reason to C-bet this type of hand. This, this works well in my check back range uh, to, to balance when I basically have total air in the spot and facing a turn bet i mean with the nines and the gutter uh i think that it's very standard to like i set myself up with a flop check back to set myself up to call in the spot and possibly call twice uh, most of the time and i just unfortunately just it's kind of a cooler basically like he uh, could definitely have hearts that missed he could be betting uh, two pair, maybe even like a hand like ace jack, possibly. I don't know a lot about this player, but uh, when he does bet larger here, it is a little more polarizing. But I think with this dynamic, big blind versus uh, small blind, I just have a little bit too much hand to fold. So uh, that's why I went ahead and made the call and lost. And that happens sometimes, but it is fine. I like to size. Um, my three bets from the small blind a little bit larger so I can discourage the big blind from continuing and get the pot heads up with the uh, early position raiser. You can definitely argue um, you can definitely argue flatting here sometimes, but uh, and that's kind of wild. <laughs> but um, I think this is fine though. Um, hmm, Thirty four. I just without any reads is a really tough spot. I do block aces, ace king, queens. Um, I think it could often be. 
I mean, I could definitely see him doing this with, like, Kings or, like, even... I mean, he's going to be doing this with possibly, like, Jacks plus, maybe 10s plus, and then, like, Ace, King, Ace, Queen. I don't know if I do so well against that range. Um, I think just with an unknown, this is unfortunately a little bit light. You could argue it. He's definitely... Um, stack was a little bit smaller, so I'm not sure. That's definitely arguable, but uh, we'll just let it go. And let's see if I can find where I thought I had some hands on this table that maybe I wanted to talk about. Um, maybe this one? No, I talked about that one with, if I had backdoor equity, I would bluff raise him a lot in that spot. Yeah, well, I guess this was one of them I wanted to talk about real quick. So 98 of clubs, I see you guys flatting most of the time in this spot. I think that's probably okay in these games. Um, if like if this player is not uh, too aggressive in three betting a whole lot, but I think against what is an attempt to steal from the button, uh, this just hand plays a little bit better. Um, like as a more aggressive play, I don't really have implied odds with this hand against his range so often here because he is so wide. So I do think this plays well in this spot. It gives me a nice deceptive hand that gives me some board coverage um, as well. And so I think this is uh, actually what I would prefer to do most of the time. I would flat here with like maybe more like Jack 10 suited, Queen Jack suited stuff, but I even with three bet some of those uh, as you guys have seen me in this. I think maybe in part one or part two that I was three betting like queen 10 off and some other hands from this spot like that. So I think this is fine. And I like being more aggressive in these games. I think players just often don't know how to combat that that well. Excuse me, guys. So um, I definitely think that is fine. And I'm just waiting for the big line over here, I guess. Um, so that might take a minute. Hopefully we'll get some hands over here. Six four offsuit. I don't think. Well, now we're blinds versus blind. I was gonna say I'm pretty much gonna be folding this hand every time, but I pretty much defend most of the time here, even with this terrible of a hand. There's just so many boards I can take it away from him on. So I am just going to bet here uh, just on this board texture. I think I'm just going to try to take it down. I actually was going to consider a bluff raise. That'd be a little bit wide, but I can barrel hearts. And a lot. there's like a lot of turn cards that come like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that I can bet. Um, I think when you check calls here, it's a lot of like ace high and a lot of possible pairs that are uh, like you could have like five, actually you have like sevens or sixes or something. I think it is a spot where players are overfolding the turn. Uh, I meant to probably play that. Um, but I just think, like, ace X will fold here every time. I think pairs that are not, like, between the five and the queen will fold here a lot. So I think players just overfold in that spot. And you, it's not a spot where I want to be one and done. I just want to, uh, I expect a lot of check call in that spot and then just a lot of overfolding on the turn. So I think that's a pretty easy spot just to barrel with, even with air there, it's kind of, I'm kind of showing that any two works uh, in that spot. So king six off, that's a little bit too loose on the button. Nine seven off will be the same. So yeah, I think there's been some interesting uh, spots to talk about so far. Uh, this part, like part two of this two part series will definitely be a little bit shorter. I think part one went like 51 minutes or 54 minutes or something. Uh, I think this one I'm gonna try to get maybe like 30 to 40 minutes unless the action's just too crazy, or I'm just running really well, then I won't uh, probably stop playing, but, and as I say that, I get pocket aces. <laughs> uh, open from the cutoff pretty easy. But yeah, so we'll see. I think there's definitely been some interesting stuff to talk about a lot. I think there's been a lot more to talk about than I thought there would be, so I, I'm actually pretty happy with this so far, and I hope uh, when I review it and edit it that it'll uh, be definitely worthy of putting up on the site for you guys.
New player on the left table here. We'll see if I can pay attention to him. I think this player's actually been recently new, or he's recently new as well. So on the right table, well, I was going to say, if he just, if he three bets me there, um, you can flat sometimes, but I, I would like to start actually developing a four betting range uh, with them so I can four bet bluff a little bit more, especially because it's four handed. I think I'd like to be a little more aggressive and, and start stealing uh, more pots. So I think I would four bet aces there. And that's in a game theory sense, you should be pretty much four betting 100% of the time. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, like probably 100% of the time. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong with flatting for like deception. Uh, sometimes, but I think I would like to develop a four betting range there. Like if you're, the more often you're gonna want, like the more often you four bet bluff in those spots, then you're gonna want value hands in your range more often than not. If you're gonna flat uh, pretty much most every time there, then you're gonna have to throw hands like kings and aces in your flatting range, but um, I think it's more profitable to develop a four betting range uh, in this game format and with, and with these dynamics, so. Oops. And like I said, in these games, I'm just going to go ahead and open all my small blinds with all my hands I'm going to play. I think in tougher games or with a tougher big blind, I would I would limp a hand like this sometimes to balance that out. Queen 5 off, uh, even against Queen 5 suit, I definitely would defend, but I think this is a little weak. Uh, but yeah, I just think I'm going to open uh, most of my hands here, expecting players to just not defend properly, I think, um, in the big blind, so... And looks like he was about to time out, but then he called. Um, I mean, pretty good board for my range. Uh, I think this time I will go ahead and start with a check. I would be checking a lot of hands um, in this position, like in this dynamic. So, And now I'm probably going to go for value twice here. Depending. If it's like a jack or ten of spades, that could get kind of tricky. Actually, I don't know. I might go for value twice no matter what. <laughs> And that's pretty much a brick. Uh, I think a queen calls for sure. Maybe hand like fives or sixes that you have enough time to... Uh, what's this? What's going on here? Okay, so we're going to try to ice the limper. Um, but yeah, I'm going to bet for value here. And uh, I would have liked to size it up a little bit maybe. This board just hits my range really well on the left table. Got some backdoor equity, so I'm going to go ahead and bet. And yeah, I was expecting a fold most of the time there, same as on the left table, so um, I think that's fine. Not a whole lot to talk about. Blinds versus blinds, like small blind versus big blind, you're going to, um, you can definitely value bet a little bit thinner um, than you normally would. Like it's just a dynamic where your ranges are so wide that these players, if they're good enough, they're going to have to defend a little bit wider and be a little more tougher, stickier. So uh, that's why I was considering like kind of auto betting twice there with like an ace and the weakest kicker. Whereas in other situations on the table, like with different dynamics, that might be a hand that you sometimes can only get one street, sometimes not even one street, to be honest. So, um, but that's a spot where it's a little different, I think, for sure. And the table on the right is kind of losing. Well, now we got five players, but it's kind of the action's kind of starting to. Well, now he's sitting out again. Um, the action's a little bit underwhelming on the right here, and on the left it's getting a little bit slow too. So I might actually start to wrap it up, as I don't want to give you guys just boring footage, uh, just to have footage basically. I want it to be valuable and and at least somewhat entertaining. So. Um, but right table, uh, I mean, a three bet is fine. Like I said, I do like to have some types of Broadway hands like this in my flatting range, so I will go ahead and flat. And start with a check. Um, I'm trying to think if I would have a leading range on here. Probably not as often, just because I would be three betting most of my good kings. And most of my better jacks, but even if I had trips, though, that wouldn't matter. I mean, I'm trying to think if I, 
Well, this would be a decent hand to, uh, if I was gonna have a leading range, this is a hand that I would have to have in there just to balance out King X, I think. So, um, but I think I would've started with check call. You can definitely argue check raise is that probably overfolding in that spot. I am gonna go for probably two bets here with no showdown value and some, uh, some nuttish equity with a semi bluff. Well, I wanted to bet 350. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I need to bet here with like a hand that's closer to the bottom of my range. Um, I don't know how often a hand like sevens folds here or whatnot from this player, but I think it might fold often enough. Even like ace x, you're going to get that to fold if you floated uh, on the turn with that. So you, you need to fire this river, even if you think you're probably getting called a decent amount of the time. But it's just, it's not profitable to bet turn and then check brick rivers there. It's just too exploitable. It's, it's, the most profitable line is de definitely uh, planning to bet twice, turn a river there. So uh, you just got to have you just got to have the guts and the heart to do it. Pretty much, uh, you just got to be willing to pull that trigger. Because if you're going to play King X or Jack X that way, you got to have some hands that balance that out um, on those runouts. So, oops, I didn't mean. Okay, so I've done that like two or three times. Now I need to stop doing the auto fold because I would have played that hand, but not a big deal. Oh, it is kind of a big deal. I need to play hands for you guys, so I think it's a big deal. So I haven't really seen this player do much yet. Uh, three bit from the small blind. I'm gonna start with an open on the right table, obviously. Uh, this is fine to defend in this spot, though. I think it does have some decent playability, whereas like Queen Jack off didn't have decent playability in either part one or if it was in this video. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Very good, um, like, texture for the most part for him. He doesn't need to bet so large here. Um, this is just going to fold out hands like this for me. Uh, it is a board, though, that's very static and helps him out. I I mean, it feels tight to, like, fold with all this backdoor equity. But, I mean, he is going to have a stronger range here for sure. Queen X definitely, uh, or, like, the queen definitely hits a lot of his range. So it feels tighter. But when he just bets that large, he's just, I think that... I do think it's a mistake from him because um, I think because he's, his C bet frequency is so high in that spot that he is kind of hurting himself by, uh, like he needs to be a little more polarized in that spot, I think, like with to his better hands and then do his bluffs because uh, it really is going to hurt his like checking range a lot. So. Um, and he can be exploitable to bluff raises on that flop in that spot, even when he is betting that large. And, and he's often only getting like better hands to continue anyway. Um, but he might, at these stakes, he might not be thinking about anything like that. Like if he has ace-queen plus, then he's just going to bet for value, and some players will call him with worse. But I, I'm just talking more on like an advanced game theory uh, level. Like if he is going to be C betting with such a high frequency in that spot, then I do think he needs a bet uh, like around, I think like half pot works a little bit better. He can even bet smaller than that, but half pot's usually, I think, pretty standard in that spot for most people. So, um, but yeah, just going to fold there and give him credit because I really need like a beautiful turn to probably continue, but uh, with no reads, that is. If I had a read that, or like a HUD up that he, f like, that he would C bet, uh, flops and then check fold like over fold turns then you could definitely argue just floating like really really wide or bluff raising the flop if he folds to uh flop raises too often so but that's stuff you need reads on and i'm obviously not playing with a hud so that's a little more difficult to uh judge but uh, i definitely think that's some stuff to take into consideration Yeah, I don't know. It seems like the action's okay, but it seems like pace of play has been a little slow, and the action's slowed a little bit. I think I am going to wrap it up after I get through the button on my right table here, so I'll play a few more hands. 
Um, but like I said, if you guys, I would definitely suggest watching part one if you haven't. I think there's a lot of interesting uh, theoretical stuff that I talked about in that part, and there was some interesting hands for sure. So uh, check that out if you haven't. Otherwise, we'll get um, at least my button in on the right here, and then we'll probably wrap it up. Not a bad session overall. I think the one hand where I think in part one I kind of got coolered somewhat. I ran a straight into a flush. I was uh, doing pretty well on this table. I actually was, I think I was actually up more on the right table here, so that kind of sucks too. I don't know. I don't know. That happens. <laughs> it's not a big deal. One session, you're going to have a very small sample size and much higher variance short term, so uh, that. That stuff will definitely happen. So Jack Nine off, we will definitely be playing about the bottom of my button opening range. And I can't call a three bet with this, so this is more of an open fold. But uh, if these guys are going to overfold in the blinds, then I can start to open that up to like Jack Eight offsuit, maybe even Jack Seven offsuit, possibly. Like that's starting to get a little wide, even so. Um, Jack-7 offsuit on the left, if it does get folded me facing the mid-race from Scalabrini, this is... Okay, so never mind. <laughs> Thank God. Because uh, I might have... That one's really close. It's really borderline. Like, I've been playing and studying a lot of no-limit heads-up, and that hand out of position uh, is close. I think I usually call it, like, Jack... Excuse me, guys, like, Jack-8 offsuit and better. So I'm just glad Clemens 3-bet there so I didn't have to play it. Yeah, so I think this is enough. Um, let's see what I get over here, and then maybe I'll play one more for you guys. No. So yeah, if you guys have any feedback or uh, questions about part two here, then let me know. Like I said, watch part one if you haven't. I think there's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care, guys.